Și astăzi și lumea care în cadrul încearcă să domineze lumea poate să se împiedice de Moldova. Noi suntem țară ortodoxă. Și dacă nu vor auzi jidului acest cuvânt, noi vom ridica lumea și țara. Niciun jidul, mărșal, care încearcă să ne sporci pe noi, nu va reuși. Poate să ne onoare, poate să ne traumeze copiii, pentru că toate lucrările care... Hello everyone, welcome to GGN. This is part one for this news bulletin today. It's Monday, February 25th, 2013, and I'm Darko. Alright, I'm gonna um, just put it out there. This is an older video, and I just saw it recently though, um, but it's from 2009. It was reposted in 2012, I think. But I'm only uh, covering it because I've seen a few things, just a few articles that I want to tie in with it. Because uh, I mentioned before, of just like patterns and trends that I see, and one of them is uh, uh, these people here are saying what? They call themselves Orthodox Christians. They say they will not let Moldova be uh, run by Jews. But the background behind it, they're saying several dozens of people took part in an anti-Semitic manifestation in the uh, basically the city or the country. The participants of the protest, which took place in Central Park, chanted anti-Semitic slogans. They ripped the Jewish symbols put up in the park last Friday on the occasion of the Jewish Hanukkah holiday. Um, from what I was reading about that, uh, that menorah that was there at that right there um, by that statue uh, was put there as basically a way to uh, um, punish, I guess, Moldovia for uh, participating and allowing uh, Jews to be killed during World War II. So the point here is about guilt, just like Germany, where um, they were supposed to be responsible for the war, and the whole thing was to make Germans feel guilty, even to this day, to rewrite their history and their books and stuff like that, um, and be ashamed. For the fact that these people actually started the war, they killed their own people. So with that being said, Kensington Shabbat menorah left powerless. This is an article that was actually from December 12th of 2012. Residents fearing the precariously rigged menorah says here on the Catton Avenue bridge got their Chanaka wish last night. Someone snipped the wire to the display, leaving it in the dark. So it said just hours after the story about the Kensington Shabbat menorah appeared online, someone cut and removed the extension cord that dangled over the pedestrian's head. So I moved that elicited cheers from the critics. Um, but it goes on here and basically says that, that they did it for uh, because it was uh, hanging electrical wires and stuff like that, and it was unsafe. One individual expressed his fear about the menorah on the neighborhood, saying that uh, it, they basically accused him of being culturally ins insensitive, even though uh, he's actually Jewish. But he says menorahs and religious displays in general have been a point of tension in the neighborhood ever since the menorah was set up at the now defunct Key Foods by a Shabbat rabbi in 2009. Jewish delis in a pickle, it says, in New York, Jewish delis were uh, once numbered in the thousands, now total a few dozen. The LA landmarks are uh, closed or struggling. Food prices, more restaurant choices are partly to blame. Is that the only one? It says, increasing apathy, particularly from young patrons, has driven the traditional Jewish uh, delicatessens from the mid-century pinnacle. Basically, they're blaming it on health reasons. I say one of the reasons is a demographic shift, also saying that a lot of these younger generations splintered into the suburbs. Then you have Israel's coming civil war. The Haredi Jews confront a militarized, secular Zionist state. It says Israel is heading towards a profound internal crisis, a Jew-on-Jew -Jew confrontation, which has major implications for its relations with the Palestinians, as well as it as its Arab neighbors. It says the conflict is between the highly militarized Zionist state and the Haredi religious movement over a number of issues, including recent proposals by the Israeli Prime Minister to end the religious exemption of Haredi uh, youth from serving in Israel's colonial armed forces. It says even before the forcible imposition or founding of the State of Israel, uh, the horrendum, I'm, I'm sorry, butchering this word, uh, were opposed to Zionism. So the vast majority of them in Israel remain staunchly opposed to the Zionist state for religious, ethical, and political reasons. Then UK students shun Israeli envoy's speech. You have Israeli Deputy 
ambassador to Britain has been forced to flee from a British university campus after his address was disrupted by angry students chanting free free Palestine so it goes on here and it says the footage shows a university official apparently Thomas Scoto associate Dean approaching the students and warning them I know about five of you if you continue you'll be brought up on charges against university ordinances which prohibit disruption of a lecture but you have to remember in California they were trying to propose that law I don't think it got passed yet but about uh, protesting uh, over Palestine and you can't and you wouldn't be able to do that at all uh, because it would be considered anti-semitic swastikas found at scene of Florida daycare fire the owners of a church and daycare facility in Fort Lauderdale Florida pointed to swastikas uh, spray painted on the building as a proof that the fire that tore through the building late Saturday night was premeditated hate crime so it's pretty messed up I guess the guy the bishop said uh, whatever game they're playing doesn't frighten me well the only game I think is being played here is it's a PSYOP. Um, you look at the comment boards and surprisingly a lot of people notice something which is how would people that were supposedly neo-Nazis do it backwards? Uh, when supposedly the Nazi flag was on what? It was usually right facing on both sides except for the basically their maritime flags. Uh, the only other group that would be using this uh, sign the way it's uh, written up there would be uh, Indians or Hindus. So. You know, it could just be a group of, you know, some uh, trailer trash who don't know better and just use the symbol for, uh, you know, basically being racist or something. Street cleaner, but you know what, that's the thing. It's just like uh, on other stories I've heard where they actually come down to it and um, you, when you get these call-ins about threats and stuff like that, about uh, racist or even um, bullying or you're not uh, for the LGBT agenda, uh, people actually make the whole thing up themselves. Street cleaner attacked in uh, Tel Aviv. It says they called me stinking Arab. Israeli uh, Arab admitted to hospital with head wounds says group of drunken Jews assaulted him on the seaside. The Jews uh, are like brothers to me, he said. He suffered injuries to his head, eye socket, and jaw. Uh, pretty crazy. He was attacked by 20 of them. Investigators are looking into the possibility that the assault was nationalistically motivated. I was telling you about that and from that Time Magazine article. Then you have this Israeli settlers attack Catholic monastery and price tag strike. So church urges Israel to change culture of contempt. Israeli settlers, this is from September, I'm just building this all together. Israeli settlers launch an arson attack against Catholic uh, monastery outside Jerusalem today burning the door and spray painting anti-Christian graffiti on the walls latest in a growing number of price tag attacks by the seller movement so you don't see any uh, uh, stories or articles wrapped in with that one earlier then you have Israel demands Palestinian Authority stop public protests from the 24th of February of this year implies facing massive unrest linked to the torture death of a Palestinian detainee Israel's responded by issuing a public demand for the Palestinian Authority to do whatever is necessary to stop all protests against Israel in the West Bank, implying that the resumption, the, yeah, resumption of the tax transfers was conditional on ending the dissent. Um, yeah, so what the youth, in that Time Magazine article I was talking about, was that they were, f they were definitely not for any kind of two-state solution or peace, and basically they want a hard-line uh, uh, dictator. So, so they, have, they have like a right, right group, and then they have a far-right group. Palestinians sneak sperm out of Israeli prisons. This actually, I think, was through the news cycle a little while ago, maybe a month ago. Fertility doctor cooks up smuggling scheme. So the wives of Palestinians held in Israeli prisons are getting pregnant in an odd way by smuggling out the prisoner sperm, says NBC. But the families won't say how they get the sperm past a glass separation, body search, and airport-style scanner. This is interesting. It says here that it was an invented strategy uh, I guess here a fertility doctor in Ramallah because he saw the wives of prisoners paying a very high price, he said, waiting for years while husbands served time and then being too old to conceive, which is interesting because that's a different culture. Here in our culture in the West and in Europe, we, uh, you just leave your significant other. But it's interesting because they call it what? Trimming the grass, the blades of the grass. That's why they have these little mini hot wars. It's to kill people. That's what it's to do. So they're literally carrying out a holocaust against these people. Israel U.S. Uh, successfully tests anti-missile system. Israel and the U.S. on Monday, or Israel, whatever you want to call it, same state, on Monday carried out a successful test of the next generation Arrow 3 missile defense system for the first time sending an interceptor into outer space where it could destroy
missiles fired from Iran. And I don't think it has anything to do with Iran. This has to do with outer space. This has to do with um, uh, militarizing space with weapons. This is what we just covered recently. This is where it's it, it's really starting to uh, you'll just, you will start to see a lot more of this in the, in the future, probably in the next year or two. So expect more asteroids and comets or whatever other crap, you know, to to create a threat or like Iran, you know, IRG or aliens. But I don't think they're going to go with that route. IRGC basically Iran wraps up three-day maneuvers in eastern Iran, so they had their own little uh, exercises as well. That was ground and air military exercises. Iran fleet makes maiden voyage through Malacca Straits as Navy commander. So it goes on and says that they've crossed the Strait of Malacca for the first time since the 1979 Islamic Revolution. So he added that the Navy's 24th fleet of warships compromising uh, Sabalan destroyer and this Karg helicopter carrier had set sail for the Malacca Strait to provide security for the route, adding that the fleet would enter the Pacific Ocean on Tuesday. And now to the Oscars. Obama-backed torture film fails at Oscars, so Zero Dark Thirty wins no major awards. So. Um, which is nice and everything, but uh, what else won? Well, Argo wins Best Picture, so not a very big surprise. I wasn't surprised. I kept saying it was a surprise. It wasn't a surprise to me. Um, but also, what? You had uh, Lincoln, another propaganda film. So I kind of found it surprising that he would say that, you know, Oh, I didn't know anything, you know, when I was uh, first here about uh, a goodwill hunting, which actually had to do with what? He was real smart, and he didn't want to take a job working for the military-industrial complex. So, actually, I, they may have actually known something back then, because now that he's back, uh, you know, apparently he's going to be writing propaganda for the Pentagon. So, but that's success, you know, that's success, and uh, that's what they look for, so... Good job, Ben. But Iran plans a response to Argo Films, saying that they're planning to finance a film that says it will correct the historical inaccuracies of the movie Argo. Following its release, the movie was condemned by the officials as anti-Iranian, with others accusing Affleck of promoting Islamophobia. According to Fox, uh, Iran's version is going to portray cowardly U.S. diplomats who are treated well by their captors and eventually safely return by their Iranian hosts. It centers around, most of you already know, the 79 hostage crisis during which Iran's revolutionary students sparked a political crisis in the United States when they took 52 American diplomats hostage for 400 days. From the History Channel's uh, website, CIA assisted coup overthrows the government of Iran. So, the Iran military with the support of financial assistance of the United States, government overthrows the government uh, Premier Mohab uh, Mossadegh and reinstates the Shah of Iran. Iran remained a solid Cold War ally of the United States until a revolution that ended the Shah's rule in 1979. So the bad leader, this Mossadegh, immediately began attacks on British oil companies operating in his country. Iran's middle class feels squeeze of sanctions, Western sanctions. It says as inflation tied to sanctions drives down the value of the Iranian currency, so the biggest complaints are coming from the middle class, so of course, what, don't have any choice about nuclear development or anything, so they're going to take it out on them. Instead of the government officials, it says who can no longer afford the imported goods and foreign travel that they grew used to when the petrodollars streamed into Iran. And I actually watched the end of the Oscars. I don't normally, but since I'm living somewhere else, there's actually a TV in the house, so I watched the end of it just to see. And, uh... I, I was like, what is this? What the hell is this? This is like something out of a, a um, sci-fi movie or just something that you hear about maybe uh, from like World War II style regimes. Uh, oh, Michelle Obama, the first lady, just popped in to, to, to give the actual Oscar. Presenting the Oscar was kind of messed up. Flanked by military and um, or cadets presenting, uh, you know, an Oscar to a movie that was going to be what? Propaganda said next she'll be in every movie theater preview telling you to shut off your cell phone and put away the popcorn but like we we're saying how there's different cultures and we want to the elites want to create this one unified global culture and some people aren't on board with that yet um which is what iran iranian news censors michelle obama's oscar gown i guess it was over her showing some skin saying that the gown exposed her shoulders in a way that would violate the codes of modesty enforced in many muslim nations finishing up toilets flood oscars lobby so a pipe burst just before the ceremony started so it was an unglamorous beginning about a half hour of the show a pipe burst in the women's bathroom and uh basically crap started flowing so the poor woman came out looking like a scene from carrie she was drenched thank you